Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to this fifth Sunday in Lent. And a welcome to all of you who are watching online today. We are thrilled that you are with us and thrilled to see everyone with us today. And I hope that everyone will stay for coffee hour. So for those of you that we don't know that we can get to know. Our service continues on page 323 with the third set of sentences. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Turning to page 317 for the Decalogue, page 317. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading comes from the book of Genesis, 
The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, you may eat freely of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. As sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. 
Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type for the, of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift and the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to After Jesus was baptized, he was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. 
The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. Oh, that slimy snake. Have any of you ever known one of those slithering kind of snakes that sort of just comes along into our lives and says, well, it'd be okay this time. Or is that really what your mom told you? Maybe, maybe it would be okay if we do this or if we don't do that. Well, I don't think that's exactly what my mom said. And, or I don't think that's really according to the law. Or, well, but yeah, it's okay. Have any of you ever been in that situation? Am I the only one? Oh, man. You know, that's the way temptation comes into our life. But listen to this Genesis story, or think about this Genesis story, that Adam and Eve have been placed in the Garden of Eden. Does it get any better than that? Here they are. They are in a land that's beautiful, a garden that is beautiful. They have food to eat. They have each other. And they have God who is speaking to them. Imagine. They are there in a place with everything they need. And you know, that's the way our life is. God has given us everything we need. But I tell you, it can, I just need one more skirt in my closet. I'm sure if I had this skirt, that suddenly everything in my life would be better. Did anybody ever have that happen? Or if I had one more pair of black pants. Now, how many pairs of black pants can any one woman have, really? But somehow life would be better if this happened or that happened. That's how temptation happens. But you know, there was a desert father who said, no temptation is bad. No temptation is bad because God has made everything. God makes everything. And so if God has made everything, then how could a temptation be bad? I mean, now, if I eat too much, well, did God make food bad? No, God made food good. But sometimes I think just one more chocolate bar is not going to hurt me. Temptations, as this mystic father said, are the very things that enable us to create a sense of virtue in our life. Because it's not that there are temptations in our life, it's how we respond to the things in our life. And it's what we bring to the situation. If I come with a heart of greed and envy and 
am seeking more abundance when in fact I'm living in plenty. That's, that's the issue. That's the issue that we get caught up in. And if we're not dealing with any of one of those things, any of those, you know, envy, greed, help me remember those seven things. What are those seven sins? Sloth, sloth. yeah, I like sloth. Okay, yeah. And some of the, okay, greed, lust, lust what else? Gluttony, wrath. wrath, oh, wrath, yeah, oh, wrath. Wrath will get us every single time because you know what happens with this is that something, we do something in our life and then rather than just fessing up and say, I did it, blame me, it's my fault, we tend to carry things. Rather than going to somebody and saying, I am so sorry, I really blew this. We can carry it, and so before long, then we've got to justify it. We've got to somehow make sense of it, just like in the Garden of Eden. Well, so God goes to the man and says, why did you do this? I told you not to do this. Well, she told me. Well, why did you do this? Well, the snake told me. Are we going to listen to every snake that comes into our garden, that comes into our life? Well, sometimes we will. Sometimes we will. And God knew that. And that's why on the first Sunday in Lent, we always hear these temptations. Because when Jesus had been in the wilderness, had been in, out there for 40 days, and he was hungry. And so, oh, well, I could give you food. Well, and Jesus may have been questioning at this point who he was. Well, you know who you are, and if you are so great, then nothing's going to happen to you. Oh, my gosh. If you've listened, and I don't know how anybody could have turned on the news and not missed hearing about the um, legal case with, Mur I don't know his first name, Mr. Murdoch right now, and even who's accused of killing his wife and son, and even his law partners say he was manipulative. And that's what made him really, really good in his job. He was manipulative. Well, now that's an interesting thing, isn't it? How sometimes some of the gifts we have in some situations can serve us well. But when we begin to think that we are above the law, or in the case of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, Eden when we begin to think that what we want to do is above what God wants for us, that becomes a problem. That becomes a problem. And you know, the thing which I had never noticed before, and you might think about this later, that just as Adam and Eve were put out of the garden into the wilderness, Jesus was coming out of the wilderness. And Jesus was tempted and he rose above those temptations. So as the Apostle Paul said, one man's disobedience was forgiven by one man's obedience for what Jesus did for us. And that the good news for us is always that the God who loves us and wants nothing more than goodness for us in our life, is always here for us. And in this season of Lent, we're called to reflect on our life and to think about, are there places where we are carrying wrath in our heart that are eating us up? They're not hurting anybody else, but they're eating us up. Or 
places where our greed has gotten in the way, or our sloth, or our envy. These are the things that will kill us. It's not, it's not that somebody asks us to do something, it's that which we carry in our heart. And so in this season of Lent, may we remember that Jesus came for us. Jesus came that we might know what it means to be forgiven, to be loved, to be shown grace, and to experience new life. And may every one of your days, of my days, of our days, be a new day. That every day we start anew, and may we all start fresh with Jesus. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are in the service bulletin. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth unity and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may ag agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, Bishop Michael Curry, Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church, Susan Haynes, Bishop of the Diocese of Southern Virginia, Nancy Meck, our rector, and Carolyn Craft, our assistant priest, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe Biden, President of the United States, Glenn Youngkin, Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, the supervisors of Prince Edward, Buckingham, Charlotte, Amelia, Nottoway, and Cumberland counties, 
and the mayor and town council of Farmville, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Richard, Jennifer, David, Geraldine, Mary Jo, Thomas, Caitlin, Gwen, Chester, Liz, Savvy, Gail, Mike, Rick, Kim, Trina, Jill, Caroline, John, Richard, Barbara, Adam, Nancy, Kevin, Stephanie, Dave, Lynn, Yannick, Rick, Jimmy Carter, Liz, uh, Savvy, Marty, the family of Doa Ali, George, Betty, Annie, Deborah, Dennis, Don, Marie, Lowell, Bob, Susan, Alicia, Bev, Chuck, Joanna, Twyla, Elsie, Alice, and Phil, all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these prayer, our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. On page 330, Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and, and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. At the top of page 331, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Hear the word of God to, who le to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Please stand.
The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another. Are there birthdays or anniversaries? Birthdays or anniversaries? No? Okay. I, um, in this season of Lent, this is particularly um, a time that you might be interested in this, but in fact, it's, you can do this at any time of the year, and I'd like for you to turn in your prayer book to page 447. Page 447 in your prayer book. On page 447, you will find the reconciliation of a penitent. And this is not something that we often do in the course, in fact, we don't do it in the course of a service, but it is a service that is open to anyone at any time who would like to have um, their confession heard or with a priest, or it could be with anyone. And um, more frequently in the course of this, it's done with a priest, and, and you'll notice on page 448 that the priest pronounces an absolution over the problem, over the situation that has been presented. I'll just share with you, when I was in seminary and um, we were going through the different liturgical rites, all of us went through this service of reconciliation. And so before I met with my spiritual director, I got out a legal pad because I knew I had quite a few sins to list. And it was like several pages. And I got to my spiritual director, who was a priest, prepared to go through my list, and she said, no, God knows what's on that list. The important thing is you know and that you are willing to lift that up to God and that you are willing to turn and walk in a new direction. You know, as I just said, temptations are not good or bad. It's what we do with them, and it's what we do with the aftermath of whatever has happened. And if there's something that you are carrying in your heart that is heavy on your heart, that you think it's time to let this go. It's time to let this go. You may recall, I've, I told this story, well some of you may not have heard this, but many years ago I was having dinner with a couple and the husband was blind. And I was telling a story about growing up with all those brothers, and one of my brothers took apart my bicycle and hadn't put it back together, couldn't put it back together. And I ended up having to pay half the price for a new bicycle because I had left it someplace where I shouldn't have left it. Well, that made no sense to me, and I was still mad. And this man who had did, could not see my facial expression but could hear my voice quietly ask, are you ever going to forgive your brother? And it stopped me in my tracks. I had carried that for 20 years. And it's true, I was still mad at my brother. And it was time to let it go. And perhaps there are things in your life that it's time to let them go. And so I commend this service to you. And if you want to come and see me or contact Mother Carolyn, I'm sure well, either of us would be glad to meet with you. But I also want to encourage you to look through the service because this is something that by your own doing it, God hears that and knows the change of your heart and the direction that you hope to go. Um, at the conclusion of the service, I hope that everybody will stay seated through the uh, postlude. I have an announcement, but now I'd like to ask Peggy to come forward. Today is Peggy's last Sunday with us as our organist. After 25 years...
It is, it is not her last Sunday with us. She will continue to be a part of our congregation and to be active. And she keeps on making some comments about the things that she's looking forward to. And so I'm really excited to hear what those things are going to be because she always has this little impish look when she says that to me. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so we are, we are so grateful for your service, Peggy. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, on March the 12th, two weeks from today, we will be having a reception for Peggy at coffee hour to formally thank her for that time. And at that time, we'll all have a chance to chat with you. But also, I hope that if you can be at coffee hour today and in the next week, it's a good time to just say thank you for all of us to say thank you and to tell you how much we've appreciated you. And Peggy, is there anything you would like to say? Something's been running through my head that I, I ran across a bulletin that my mother had saved. She saved everything. Um, it was a bulletin from the day that my, the minister that I grew up with, his last sermon before he retired. Uh huh. And I just remember the title of it. And um, it was called One Sort of Ending. One Sort of Ending. One Sort of Ending. And, uh, knowing him, I think what he meant was ending always means new beginning after that. Yes. It isn't really an ending. So um, that's what's been rolling through my head. I figured out what people meant by new beginning. So. How exciting. Yeah. Well, we are thrilled we can continue to walk this journey with you and, and also see this new beginning evolve. So, thank yeah, you. I, I, I have to share that um, uh, Chris says I have to pass the audition to get in the choir, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe some of us can put in a good word for you, Peggy. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. And next week, Sally Mayton. Sally, would you stand, please? I think everybody knows you. But Sally, um, who is a member of John's Memorial, has graciously said that she will be playing for us um, the next two to three months uh, while we search for a new organist. And so thank you, Sally. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore, praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of the dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion 
may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Together on page 337, let us pray. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Turning to page 339, if you'd please stand and let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us. Your ever physical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whom you and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence through Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord, and may everyone be seated. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Peggy, for 25 wonderful years.